ready? Yeah. Down the road. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Late ill kid, at one young son holding it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. What is up, my people? Today or year, coming with another wonderful episode of That's Right, Nerd Soul, Dope Folks Chilling. Now, of course, the, with, you know the deal. Bring y'all in here. Y'all can meet people that's really cool, whether they're getting their art on, getting their create on, getting their write on, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And Panda's in the house early. What up? Look, I want to introduce to you someone who I got on to, uh, I think seeing a clip or something of hers. Super dope. Impressed me and is super funny up on her show, whether she's on Instagram or on her other show we'll talk about later. I'd like to introduce y'all to Jackie Ray. What's up? Hey, hey. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> What up, what up? Um, to give people an idea before we get started, what do you do? Um, I think it's easier to say what don't I do. But um, ah. so I do I, <laughs> I do a lot. I produce, I um I make talk shows, I'm a I'm a guest host, I'm a I write for new a newspaper. Um so yeah, so you probably know me from the fumble, and that's where a lot of people know me from. A lot of people actually know me. A lot of my female followers know me from um, something I started back in 2012, which was called Ladies Corner, and it was just kind of designed to teach women all about sports. So that's where I got the majority of my female fan base. Um, but yeah, now I just do guest appearances. I'm on the fumble. I'm producing my own show. I got another show coming up in January that I can't really tell y'all about yet but that one's gonna be Man. good that one might involve some travel <laughs> i signed an nda so you know i'm not trying to get some, trying to get my money with you <laughs> but when it comes out you know I'll, I'll, i'm excited about it so i just got a lot going on what up what up it shouts out to thomas b see you up in there too um my i guess i'll get started on this i met uh, or i found you on mm -hmm. the fumble it was a clip that mm -hmm. you did and no no there was a it was a twitter clip it was something you was talking about, Ice Cube. And oh, you, was okay. like, you was like, yo, <laughs> y'all bugging. And I was like, right. hey, I had a similar but video where I was like, y'all bugging. Mm -hmm. Are y'all trying, like, do you mm -hmm. hear the words coming out of his mouth? So, right. So I was like, yo, who it is? And then, of course, you know, you dive down the links, you know, mm -hmm. into a yeah. And saw you on the fumble. And I started watching live just about every day um mm -hmm. and i was like yo she's yo she's on point like mm -hmm. whenever there is a issue of um players not being treated fairly mm -hmm. or being treated at least similarly uh or whenever there's a social justice issue you never shy away from it mm -mm. um mm -mm. and i like th i like that a lot so that actually hooked me in and kept me watching and then i was like okay cool then i found out the j ray productions um if you could real quick since we got nurse on light up in here uh tell Look us the handsome <laughs> hello handsome <laughs> say hi 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 <laughs> so, oh so cute <laughs> so with <laughs> With that said, uh, give us a little rundown of what The Fumble is and what you do on The Fumble. So The Fumble is a, um, it's, in theory, it's a sports talk show. Um, but in reality, it's more of a sports gossip show. Um, the sports gossip has been our bread and butter for a long time. So um, ironically, just to give you a story about that. So I was on an island. I had ventured overseas to go to Saipan. Saipan is about 150 miles north. The north or south north of guam so i was overseas for two years doing my news reporting thing i was just a straight up news anchor doing my thing over there and then decided to come back to the states because you know it's hard over there being on an island where there's not that many black people so i came back i had seen the fumble because the fumble had started the exact same time i started ladies corner and oh, when i started ladies corner i thought that it would be a good pairing to work with the fumble we literally started the same month in 2012 they might have wow. started a few months before me but we started History, at the same time yeah and i had found them and i was like oh we need to work together because it's all women and things of that nature um it didn't pan out at that time and then i had kind of ventured away from the fumble as a as a thought process because 
like I said, it's more, I'm more of like, I mean, I played ball in high school and college. And so I'm more of like the, let's get into the nitty gritty kind of it. And the fumble mm-hmm. was more like who's dating who. And I couldn't to this day tell you who Anthony Davis's girlfriend is, but I bet you my I last mean, dollar, Devin knows who it is, where she from, where she went to school. And that's just not my thing. You know? a lot. <laughs> she does. And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> so when I came back, um, I was literally on the plane in Korea um, mm-hmm. on, on their internet. Shout out to Korea Airlines, man, because that's the most comfortable I've ever flown. But so I'm on <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the internet and I see they have a posting on Indeed for, you know, a host. Ah. So, I was like, so I was like, well, let me apply. But in my heart of hearts, I was like, this ain't, this is not going to work. You know what I mean? They're not going to call me in because there is a very specific, at that time, a very specific look for that station that I didn't fit, I feel I fit. So I, I applied anyway. I, I know what went, you're talking about. I, I get yeah. you. I, I get you. Yeah. I get you. So I applied anyway, went home to Denver first. I didn't come back to LA immediately because all my family's in Denver. Went home to Denver, got a call that said, hey, you need to audition in two days. Um, since I fly so much, it wasn't a big deal. So I just hopped on a plane, came back to LA, did the audition, went back to Denver because I wasn't sure if I wanted to be where I wanted to be at that time. Okay. The fumble, the fumble called and they were like, you got it, which was the funniest thing in the world to me. Cause I was, it, it felt like the moment in time when I was in high school where I became a cheerleader. I, I tried out for the cheerleading squad on a dare cause everyone said I wouldn't get it. And then when I got it, it was just like this huge surprise. Like, wait, you, you know like, you oh, call really? Jackie Hold Ray, on. right? Uh, Jackie Ray? <laughs> Is that not another Jackie? <laughs> so, you, you read so, the, yeah. the paper? Right. <laughs> So then I started my journey on the fumble, which uh, just for transparency, I, I, I'm everyone at the fumble now knows this. I started to quit. So in December of last year, uh, I started in December of 2018. So in December of 2000, my, I wanted my December of 2019 to be my last day Mm because I wanted that one year on my resume because it just was a lot of things that I wasn't. Uh, I'm trying to find the politically correct words. Jackie Ray and her true self was not fitting into that culture for which was obsessive media at the time. So I was like, I'm just going to ride this out to December and then I'm a bounce. So then come October, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to December. Like they start, wow. you know, and then I, uh, <laughs> Arthur, who's our producer, this. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, Arthur, who's our producer, who I love to death. She was like, hey, just so you know, we've been bought out. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm probably, you know, Yo, first thing. First shouts thing out, I, go ahead. Shouts out to when you be working at an outlet and they right. come be like, hey guys, we have a meeting. You be like, oh word, what's what's going on? Y'all got new bosses. <laughs> Hold on, what? Right, right. <laughs> and about 10 people got fired. Don't worry about it. Y'all cool. Are we cool like just today? Or are we cool right. like, do I need to start looking? <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm glad that you me. mentioned that because when I was with, I was at the WB here in Denver and Fox bought out the WB. So they told us, they was like, mm. oh, we're going to have a meeting. So we go to the meeting thinking we're going to meet our new bosses. They was like, thank you for your service. Here's your last check. And I was uh. like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> and so in my head, <laughs> right and i'm like this uh, this ain't enough you know like no, friday this ain't enough they, they will so they i was no just thinking, okay y'all just going, right so y'all just going they're going to buy y'all out and we going home and this is yes uh, and this is it and no warning or nothing so okay, i kind of thought it was gonna be to thank you little... right can i at least get enough for dinner can you give me enough for dinner you know and it stays like nah get out so i kind of thought it would be the same with um this new company. I, I wasn't really privy to the company at that time. But then when I did my due diligence and uh, I saw that we were we were going to be owned by Urban One. Now Urban Own is a black owned company. And that has been my goal from day one is to either start and run a black owned company or to work for a black owned company. And that's so when I up. saw, yes. So when I saw the woman and all that she had done to kind of make this company, I was like, yo, what? And when I Blow walked in there, the first time that I met them, everyone thought I knew them already. They was like, oh, so you already know them. I'm like, nah, there's just, nah, it's just that energy you know, was you know just, that it a, was just. <laughs> like you get hired, you go into a new job, you see somebody else, like you like. What's up? No. What, what's up? 
<laughs> it, yes. You you've never met this person in your life, but it's somebody because they've been waiting for someone. They be like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah." And it's it's been. I'll holler at you been, in the break room. Don't worry about. Yes, it. yes, and it's been <laughs> such a blessing. It's and that's why I tell people sometimes you just gotta you just gotta not react, you know, because if mm-hmm. I'd have pulled the trigger when I wanted to pull the trigger, then I wouldn't be in this situation. And being with the fumble right now is such a blessing. It's it's so amazing to see. You know, I don't know, I don't get to see all of them a lot, but there's so many black creators and entertainers that work with oh. Urban One. And it's just such a blessing to be a part of something like that. Every time I talk about it, it just makes my heart smile. So nice. it's 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 one of those journeys that I did not know I was on, but I'm I'm very glad that I, I made it here. Nice, nice. So that's that's cool because when when I started watching, I was like, yo, this is a decent mix between kind of like the gossip style mm-hmm. and getting into some of the, the actual stats and wins, losses, whatever, like what people are talking about online. So I was like, this is a kind of, this is a cool mix right. of like, you know, a little bit of the gossip, a little bit of like the actual wins, losses mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I'm digging it because uh, what was it? Were y'all t- I can't remember who I saw it on Twitter recently. Uh, was it Randy Moss said something about Jerry Rice? And I was like, a what? Right. <laughs> Jer- right. Randy Moss said something like, um, Jerry Rice is one of the top three. Uh, and I was like, excuse. And look, hold up. Just let y'all know. I got love for Randy Moss. All right. I got yes. love for him. It's hard not to. He's cool. Dude. But your boy jumped out the window. When that went. I was like, I was like, Wait, so uh, he said that Jerry Rice is one of the top three wide receivers of all time. Correct. And that what he said. Yes. And I'm like, no, he's and, the you, top. and you disagree with it. I thought he said top three. Yeah, but I'm saying he's the top. He's number one. The, oh, you say he's the number one. Yes, oh, okay. He's I number got you, one. Got you. That's it. Gotcha. This is, this is you have to give that. No, he was right in saying that. You have to give that wiggle room because people always right. have their little, you know, I like him because of this. I, you have to give that wiggle room. I, well, I, I let him slide. I let him slide. Because I do like Randy <laughs> Moss. I, I let him slide on. I let him slide. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so um, I started to watch more of your content um, on Instagram. And mm-hmm. so I was like, oh, J. Ray Productions and stuff. And like, you know, she has this whole other side mm-hmm. that she's building that I never knew about that I thought was really cool. And I know you have some stuff that you can't talk about NDA wise, but what are some things that you've built since the creation of J. Ray Productions that you can talk about and sort of the intricacies of how you created that, how you brought it to light? So J Ray Productions started. Um, my my first thing, and this was before I made J Ray Productions. The first thing I ever made was Ladies Corner. That was the first thing I created and produced all by myself. Um, and that was because I kept getting in fights in bars. And like every time I would go out, ladies would want to <laughs> fight me because I'm very competitive. I know what I'm talking about, and I have the teams that I like um, and the people that I like. And then you know you give you end up giving somebody too much face time, but it's you're not talking about anything but sports. Ladies get mad, blah blah blah. So I started Ladies Corner, and I literally would bring females out to a local field, and I would all teach right. them football, and I would and I would shoot it, and I would edit it, and I would do all that. So I started it with that. That all led right. to um, my first podcast which was called what was my first podcast called i don't remember what the first one was called but oh i do it was called um two brown two brown girls which was all about two black women in denver and in in la trying to date you know because we had both come from these small cities i came from denver she came from chicago and i'm I'm gonna tell (laughs) y'all i feel sorry for y'all i'm gonna let y'all know i'm glad i'm glad i ain't gotta do none of that Oh, shout yes, out to Tyler Bennett be in the glad. chat. Shout out to Kid yes. Hart in the chat. But I'm I'm glad I ain't got to do none of that. I see, Man, dating I is see trash. what's going on. <laughs> I see what's going on on social. I'll be like, whoo. Dating is trash. I'll be trash. like, thank you, Jesus. Right. <laughs> the yes, won't he do it? Because I'm telling you, I'll be like, you're not talking about that all, all by yourself. And look, ladies, <laughs> those of you who are watching, all by yourself versus some BS is a good thing. Just Yo, look, know man, that. You know. You know. <laughs> Don't let these knuckleheads <laughs> up in your space. I'm just letting you know. Don't let none of these knuckleheads up in your space. Get right. Hey, find you somebody and de- decipher quick. Verbalize. Yes. What you yes. what, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Do you want Just like your job no. give you your, your <laughs> job gives you 90 days to prove yourself. Don't give these men more than 90 days. Don't do Man. that. If they ain't hey. with it, <laughs> give them their walking papers. Like, Where I am, I'm like, you got a good 30. 
You know and what I, I think I want. that's fair. I you think that's I fair. <laughs> mm-hmm. When, when my wife and I got to a point where we were like, okay, we want to be serious, I was like, look, I want to be married. I want to be a dad. I want to mm-hmm. have a good family. I, would, I don't want to do no craziness. Right. Like regular life. Normal. Right. No, right. I, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do no dumb. I, I don't want to be no cheating. No, I, I want to be a dad and a husband. That's what I want yep. to be. And then I let that. I let that joint be no super fat. So as at, you should ask, at, be like, look, what you, you want to do? Because mm-hmm. if you want to be doing some foolishness, go ahead, and do that foolishness. <laughs> get out! <laughs> right, <of here. laughs> right. Um, okay, so then that we did that, and then shortly after that, that that show never took off because my dad passed right when when I mm. created that show, and my dad, he's his birthday's. Um, Christmas Day, and so he passed in 2015. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. and I just didn't. Yeah, it was. I didn't want to do anything. You know what I mean? After he passed, I stayed in Denver for about two, three months, and then I came back here. And then I was just hella regular. I just, I just got me a regular job because I was just broken. You know what I mean? My dad was my best friend, and I didn't really have that person to talk to, that person to say good job. And because my dad and I we had this whole like unspoken language that was just dope, you know? And so it wasn't until, so yeah, so I did a regular job for about two years, a year and a half. And then 2016, I was just like, what am I doing with my life? This is stupid. I hate this job. I hate these people. I'm just going to, I'm just going to apply for the first reporter job that I can find and whatever it is, I'm going to get it. It, it will. And I was like, this is stupid. So literally that day I had applied for some random job. Um, didn't even look, I was on Indeed, didn't even look to see what it was. It was the highest paying reporter job on Indeed. I applied for it. They called me and then they were like, how do you feel about being on an island? I thought the job was in Minnesota or someplace, Montana, mm. something, because it was M something, N, M, N, I think, or MP. Yeah, MP. I thought it was probably a typo. It was in like Montana, Minnesota. Come to find out it's Northern Mariana's Island. So it was like wow. it's a two day journey to get to. You have to go through either Korea or Japan to get to it. And I went over there for uh, 20 months and then came back and hit the ground running. And I've been 100 miles an hour ever since. Some of the proudest things nice. I'm proud, the things that I love the most is now I have the At The Half podcast, um, mm-hmm. which I restarted. The At The Half podcast. And that's a dash, actually, right? So the opposite reaction is on Dash Radio. Oh, sorry. Um, you were, yeah, uh, the you opposite reaction is on Dash Radio. That is with Nick Hamilton. Nick Hamilton and I met when I was doing Take Five Sports which mm-hmm. was on, um, I forget that network. Um, but yeah, that was a good, that was a good like introduction into how to kind of do stuff on your own. Cause I learned a lot there. Um, so he and I met on that and then we've just kind of continued our journey. Um, at the half got picked up by backstage from a, from a, a gentleman who watched the fumble and then kind of ah. did what you said and just kind of followed all the things. And so I'm on his <laughs> network now. And then I, I'm starting, um, what I'm personally starting that I can talk about is I'm starting a, a show called All Hail, which will start um, <laughs> January 5th. It sounds bad. It sounds like All Hail, but it's All Hail as in All Hail King James. So it's going to be all things LeBron. If you guys yes. know me, that's, that's my thing. Because <laughs> you're a LeBron all, section. Yes, I am. Proud that's and right, true. <laughs> all right, now, uh, I want to get to LeBron in a second, but uh, talk to anyone who might be like listening, talk to the importance of taking that step because you could have easily been like, oh, travel, oh, an island, I don't know, you know, because there's a lot of people that are scared of taking that step outside of their comfort zone, you know, mm-hmm. to get to get to that next level. And, you know, you could have easily been like, ah, it's far, I don't know, you know, I've, I've never been there, I'm, I, I don't, you know, any number of reasons to stay where you are because mm-hmm. I'm from I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and okay. I live in LA now, and mm-hmm. I'm from a place where it's very it's very expected for you to stay there. Very much you so. Know, you stay in Richmond or you stay in Central VA. Might go to DC, but that's you pretty much DC, maybe Charlotte, North Carolina, but you ain't really mm-hmm. going too far. Right. And, you know, talk about like taking that step. How was that for you? You know, um, was it was it tough? Was it was it easy? And um, kind of like the the general steps, I guess. Moving to Saipan was really easy for me because <laughs> I, I was at the point now where I was like, I got to go. I can't 
do that. Moving to LA was easy for me, but hard mm -hmm. to actually pull off because being from Denver, um, I, my family is, my dad's an academic, you know, he's very much, you go to college, you do this. Cause I wanted to leave Colorado, you know, right out of high school, like I'm out. But my dad was yeah. like, no, get your degree, do this, do that. And so then when I got to the point where I was like, okay, I got my degree, I got this decent job, but it's still, this isn't where I want to be. Cause I actually moved out here. I moved to LA with a band. So I actually was a singer at the time. And so uh, once, oh, once, yeah. See yeah why, why you hiding that i ain't see, i was <laughs> looking i ain't seen no singing i yeah I, i've yep. been looking around i ain't been seeing no singing uh, Man, I, if you see, go if you see. go on itunes you you will see but oh, snap. uh yeah but when my band was like we out you either rolling with us or you not i was like nah i can't because blah, blah 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 and then they packed up and like left me for real for real it took me like a month and i was like oh no nah, i thought y'all was playing i didn't <laughs> So then I moved out here. The band broke up almost immediately, though. I was only wow. out here for about three months before the band broke up. Mm. But I mean, I didn't care. I was like this. I, L.A. is one of those places where I feel like you either love it or you don't. I had some success. I opened for Charlie yeah. Wilson. I um, I opened for Tyrese once. Um, sung background for Morris Day in the time once. So I had, you know, I had my successes, but the business, the business is grimy, though. So Man, once I hit that yeah. point where I was LA like, is LA, Grimy. being out here, LA is, <laughs> LA is, it's, it's one of those places, I will say, I am fortunate to have met mostly good people, but mm -hmm. LA can be rough um, if you're, if you're a straightforward person that just wants right. a straightforward answer, LA can be rough, mm -hmm. and I kind of want straightforward answers. And I had to deal with that because I've been out here almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And it is tough at times when you're like, look, you don't have to take me all around. You don't have to do all this. Just right. Tell, tell me what you either want to do or don't want to do. We can move on. Right. <laughs> but there is this, that kind of energy here where there's a lot of, it's weird. It's like a fast city, but it's slow. Right. <laughs> yeah, I met in the music now on the on the entertainment and TV side, I've met nothing but great people. But on the music side, that was like that it was it was it was low down dirty. It was it was gross. Yeah. <laughs> so one day I just reached the point where I was like, OK, I don't really want to do this anymore. And then then it was like, well, now what do I do? Um, so I started working for Torrent City Cable. Um, which led me to, um, there was a gentleman out there that had his own radio show. So he, I started working for him on his radio show and then it just kind of right. snowballed and just, just picked up steam from there. All right. So Kid at Heart, uh, comes in he says, uh, was the Saipan thing like a bit, like a cultural shock or a cultural shock when you got there? Let me tell you. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> question because... Yes. You know, it's a tropical island, so there's only 50,000 people on the island. Only, right. only, and I'm going to be generous, a hundred of us were black. And, that, and I'm being, and I'm being generous, wow. and I'm saying that because they, so Saipan is where, when that whole thing was going on between Kim Jong-un and uh, 45, that uh. was, we were terrified because the prep, we call them preposition ships. So the preposition ships would dock at Saipan. And so all the mm. men that would get off of those ships tend to be black. They were the majority of black men and women that were on the ship. So I'm going to say hundred because at any time on the island, you'd have about a hundred black people. But as far as black people that lived on the island, like that was our home. It was only like 50 people. So fun, fun story. I had just gone natural in 2016. And in an effort to grow out my hair, I was cornrowing it and doing the lace front wigs and all that. You can't do no lace front wig on an island where it's 110 degrees a day and humid. <laughs> <laughs> that is out. But I hadn't learned how to do my own natural hair yet. So yeah. that, That's a whole and, and, thing. and people don't understand that is a process. You don't just say, oh, I'm going natural and things work right. That's it's, every, it's a process. Every woman that I've talked to that has gone natural because mm -hmm. unfortunately we are in a, in a society that tells you hide your hair hide yep. it yep. do something with it move it out of the way it's not important it's not as good as some other hair so mm -hmm. you get to 20 25 30 35 whatever and you're like hold up 
I don't I know how to do my own hair. <laughs> because because my wife is natural and she has a couple of mm-hmm. friends that are natural. Um, she has some ki- some friends that have locks and stuff like that. And I've heard these conversations like, "Oh, I'm an adult, and I've never really mm-hmm. done my hair." So mm-hmm. then, of course, doing that, I'm pretty sure Saipan might not have the products. Might not. <laughs> Definitely does not. Let me just let you know. There ain't no There ain't no there. Ain't no, look, you go into any store, any grocery store in Saipan, and there's hair care products, but they're all in Japanese or Korean. Ain't none of them hair care products for you. So then it became uh, this whole thing of what the hell am I going to do? Because Amazon takes like 30 days to get to the island. Yo. So it was it was insane. So what I ended up having to do was Juices fly to Guam. No, I had to fly to Guam. Because Guam has one store because they have such a military background. They have one store (laughs) that has black hair care products. I went out there and bought enough hair care products for like a month and then locked myself in my tiny little apartment for um, a whole weekend and just YouTubed until I could figure Uh. out how to braid my own hair. And then I just kept braiding it. And then there's a couple, like if y'all go to my YouTube page right now, there's a couple (laughs) of moments where I was like, let me just do the curly fro. You know, and so I like got it down, but it was a struggle because there was no, there's nobody there to bounce ideas off of, nothing. Wow. Yeah. So you, you really, you really on your own. Mm-hmm. And, and food wise too, I became a vegetarian on the island. I'm not a like I'll eat meat now, but not on the island because they eat a lot of pork. I, I don't eat pork. Number one and number two, everything is processed, which it has to be because they're so Ooh. far away from the mainland. So it's either ah. fish or veggies and I, I became a vegetarian on the island because i just couldn't everything would mess with my stomach out there i couldn't eat anything ah mm-hmm. cool interesting mm-hmm. um so i wanted to uh get into your your career as a baller mm-hmm. because i think i think all of the ladies on the fumble have played um, no but oh no oh uh no, Britt and Devin have been cheerleaders. Um, oh, I thought they played. My bad. Excuse me. I, I missed. No, it. Britt and Devin are. I think Britt is like five four, and I think Devin is like five two. I mean, I don't know what sport you can play at that height. Maybe uh, soccer. Soccer. You play soccer. Maybe maybe they played soccer. Soccer, tennis. Uh... I see tennis. It's still a disadvantage. It's a disadvantage yeah, if you yeah. if you're going up against somebody who's taller than you. So yeah, I don't you're know. right. You're right. Uh, yeah, soccer. <laughs> but I, I'm saying as a, baller, <laughs> as a baller, what uh, what sport or sports did you play so you can you know put down your your resume up in here? Because there's a lot of so, people that don't believe that you play. Yeah. So my sport. I've seen the, the chat. The chat is oh, and I like to say, you guys are gracious yes. because that chat is that chat is rough. Yeah. To the point where I'm like. Yo, my band hammer would be strong up in that joint. Yeah, like they don't, Brittany. they don't want me running the fumble. It'd be right. like, it'd be like three people in that joint. Right. I'd be like, ah, gone, gone, gone. But our anyway. first live was like that. Our first live was like that, and I was like, oh, you got me messed up. Like if you go to our very first live, you can see me because that we were live. We weren't in. We weren't vi- virtual. We were in the studio. Yeah. So we all had our phones, and you, there's a moment where you just see me like, oh, block. My block game is so strong right now. And, and then our producer was like, you can't block everybody. And I'm like, oh, but I can't. Oh, you don't want me to block? Gotcha, gotcha. Because yeah. <laughs> it's it, it, it's rough. It, it is yeah. Rough. But uh, anyway, your your life and career as a baller. So my sport that I was really, really good at, the best at, was volleyball. Um, that mm-hmm. was the sport that I loved to play. I was really, really good at it. Um, I broke my arm at one point, and I couldn't play for a little while, and that got me into running track just because you don't really need, you know, I could still move the arm, but Perfect. I just couldn't play, you know, it's a little, <laughs> yeah. So I started running track, and when I started running track, I met Mr. Annalini, who ended up being my favorite coach of all time, and he got me into playing basketball. Now, I will say this. I was not good at basketball, but I (laughs) loved playing basketball because I had anger issues, and on defense, I could get all them anger issues out. (laughs) So I loved Mm. playing basketball. So I ran track, played volleyball, um, and basketball. Volleyball was my – I lettered in volleyball – I lettered in sports in my school, but I volleyball was the one that I played for the longest. Um, Ironically, though, 
because I wasn't that good in um, vol- uh, basketball, I didn't get a scholarship in that. I got a partial scholarship uh, to play volleyball, um, but I wanted a I wanted a full scholarship. So what I actually got a full scholarship in was bowling. That's how I paid for my first what? year of college. Go ahead, bowling. Get your bowl on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, get your bowl on. Yep. People be sleeping on a bowl game, yep. y'all. Yeah. See, now I'm full. imagining you in the bowling shirt. You know what yep, I'm saying? Yeah, all that. I'm imagining the movie Kingpin and then like you at the same time. One of my time. favorite movies. One of my favorite Yo, movies. Kingpin is classic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so a bowling Bowling. And it was weird because my dad, my dad was a bowler. So I, I told you my dad was a, my best friend. So mm-hmm. I would bowl with him. And then he started putting me in tournaments. One of a tournament that I was in my junior year, CU was there and they were like, do you want to, do you want to bowl? And I was like, no, cause no, you know, I, it, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> and then when I didn't get the scholarships that I wanted, I had revisited CU and I had missed the scholarship point at that, at that point. But they were like, but you, we can put you on the amateur bowling tour. So I went on the amateur bowling tour and instead of them giving me that money directly, they gave it to my school, paid for everything. What? Mm-hmm. Yo, you, you got to work it out. Look, won't he do it? Won't he do won't, it? Won't, won't he, he will? <laughs> Yo, oh, I can't remember what happened on the fumble. And you was like, won't he do it out, man? I was oh. really dying. And then I had to ask Devin. I said, Devin, who is he and won't he do it? She had no she idea. Like, uh, is he? <laughs> She's <laughs> like, no, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, that's, that's dope to uh, don't hear that because I never knew. See, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Getting your bowl on. Out there hitting yep. strikes, spares yep. and all that. You know, yep. kicking it. It, yeah, enough to get. I didn't even know bowling scholarships was real. Wow, see? man, you can get a scholarship nowadays in just about anything. Learn something if you new good every at day. it. Mm-hmm. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, since we're getting into sports, you love sports. There's a certain, there's a certain athlete. We got him on the middle Wait, of the screen. <laughs> oh, that, that's right, LeBron. <laughs> All day, James. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, LeBron TMF James. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you you say that you're a LeBron sexual. Yes. And you say that that's not that's not it's not a, a negative it's not term. An insult. It's no. It's not an I love insult. it. Mm-hmm. Explain that to us. So I just love all things LeBron. Um, you, LeBron is just my guy for me. When he came into the league from high school, like I have literally followed him from that moment in time when, when ESPN went to his high school. I had never seen that. I had never seen a high school kid get that kind of press. Usually they got that yeah. kind of press when they were coming into the league because we had that with you know Kevin Garnett. But I had never seen a kid – have media at his school. Yeah, they, like, were at like a, they were at like a high school game. At a high school game. And I, <laughs> that, I had never seen that before. So that that's where it started. quality should not be at that small of a, at that small right. of a gym. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was a lot. And he looked bigger than the gym to me. You know, he was so tall for his age and stuff. And I was like, yo, this is amazing. So he became just my my guy. You know, I I, I just loved him at that moment. And then when he got went straight from high school into the league. I didn't like the, the pressure that he came in under. I didn't like that. Here was this 18 year old kid, you know, 19 by the time he actually started playing, playing, playing um, his first Christmas day game. I think he was, he was 19 years. No, he was six days away from his 19th birthday. Yeah, he was birthday. almost 19. Yeah. Six days away from his 19th birthday on his first Christmas day game. And just hearing you know, the commentators go on about like, can he carry the calves? Can he do this? Can he do that? I'm like, he's freaking 18. Like, yeah. fall back. But, you know, I just did not the, like that. That's the pressure they'll put us under. They'll right. be like, but see, here's- and, then, and then meanwhile, someone who's 25, oh, he's a kid. He's a kid. Right. Kid. He's you a can't, kid. You can't. But see, here's these the are thing. just kids. He didn't know what he was doing. And this is what I tell people. This the, my my relationship with LeBron very much coincides with my blackness too, because we see that mm-hmm. all the time in in our justice system. You mm-hmm. know, a twenty five year old white guy commits a crime, and it's like, oh, he's just a kid. We all do things when we're young and stupid. A and fifteen like, year old, I was like twenty five, right? <laughs> what? A fifteen year old black kid does a 
does a crime, same crime as this 25 year old. And they're talking about, let's try him as an adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, my, my blackness has made me very protective of LeBron because they didn't do that to Michael Jordan. They didn't, but I get that Michael Jordan came in at a different time, but they, yeah. he never got this whole, he has to be the savior of Chicago. You know, everybody thought yeah. Chicago was trash. Nobody cared and, about Chicago and, and he never got remember, that pressure. He had to, he had to be the savior of Cleveland day one. Day remember, one. People, it's, it's also because people don't remember, because of course a lot of people that are commentating online might not have been alive at that time. You know what right. I'm saying? Because I was I was born in '82, so I was mm-hmm. little at that time. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, shout! The, hey, look, '82 <laughs> was a good year. So, so I was born in '82. So, people don't realize that Chicago was nothing. It was dead. Chicago they, was. They nothing. they had some sort of. Like, nobody, I think a soccer they, they team like, that had like, more yeah, people. Yeah, they were like, yeah, cool, we got Michael Jordan, but nobody yeah. was like, Jordan's here, so it's championship time. Like they right. were like they were just like all right we got Jordan let's see what happens right <laughs> I and mean, I think even the documentary he, showed that right and then and then he didn't he had so many years to kind of develop so many years to mm-hmm. get good so many so many opportunities to become a better player but LeBron had to walk in at elite status and he's had to maintain yeah. that elite status his entire career and the fact that he has done it with integrity. And has definitely elevated his game the entire time. I don't care what none and of y'all say. Money, that man is the goat. <laughs> and put money in other people's pockets than look right. like him. Uh, and that's, to, that's my thing too. Thomas D said the Blackhawks had more clout at the time. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> that's cold. That's so embarrassing. Oh, that's cold, but it's true. I remember people wearing Blackhawks jerseys. Man. Nobody wearing those Chicago jerseys at the time. Man. Uh, but um. I, with LeBron sexual, because I, I felt this way on, remember, the decision. Yes. This is how I decision. felt. I think the real reason, and let me know, you know what I'm saying, because you do this all the time, you know what I'm saying? I do my, I do my thing. People have mm-hmm. asked, but, you know, Nerd Soul Sports still got a while. You know, we still got a while for it. But the reason the decision was such a big kerfuffle, if it will, is because... <laughs> LeBron treated owners like owners treat players. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt. And they mm-hmm. didn't like it. So they mm-hmm. went to the media to push this whole thing like, oh, LeBron wrong. This, that, this. It's like y'all have players waiting on pins and needles to see where they're going. Mm-hmm. So, oh, what? Oh, it's because the field hand done told the master what he going to do? Right. But that, let, let, me, let me back up. <laughs> also, people that are mad about it, I was like, imagine this. He wants a championship, right? Mm-hmm. You're at a job. You want a promotion. Okay. Mm-hmm. You've been in this position for seven years. Was it seven? Seven, right? Seven seasons? Seven, yeah. Seven mm-hmm. years. So you've been at your job seven years. You haven't got a promotion. Would it be wrong for you to look for somewhere else to work? No. So why, why is this all this heat coming for him? He didn't get what he wanted. He was there seven years. He, he couldn't get it. So go somewhere else. I know people mad they ain't get a raise in one year. I'm one of them people. Where's my money? Where's my money, man? My don't money? make me Steve. Don't make me stew you. Where's my money, man? Where my money? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I think LeBron. One of the reasons why I think LeBron is hated so so much is because LeBron is incredibly intelligent, and he's he's one of those people who is just in. He innately has this understanding of the world around him and he immediately mm-hmm. understood and fun fun fact though this the decision was not his idea that nah. idea came from a random fan and lebron was like let's do that that's a good idea because now he put himself and you know ever since the decision he has literally been the voice of the nba whether he's the president of the NFLPA or NFL NBA PA or whatever he's been the voice since that moment and he realized Y'all don't put me in this position where I've, yep. I've, I've been in this uphill battle since I was 18 and I have let you guys control the narrative. From this moment on, I control the narrative. I thought yep. it was the dopest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> and, and what he's done for players coming into the league mm-hmm. and also as far, as far as like education and things like that. Right. It's changing the dynamic 
mm-hmm. of players and owners, and that's the yes. real problem. See what you right. what we're really feeling when it comes to like the media, like, oh man, why does it always seem like the media, you know what I'm saying? There's always like this weird slant on LeBron. It's like it's like positive, but there's like a backhand comment. Yeah, always it. yeah. It's because it's being served by these folks that aren't happy. Like the the mm-hmm. uh the the LeBron ha- uh his agency did an event uh Oh, at two the school. Ago? Uh yeah. At Was the it? at clutch uh yeah, clutch. Yeah, Clutch, Clutch did it. Right? They did it. They did an event like a month ago, two months ago, something like that. I think it was and at a high school. Agent was like, right? "Yo, man, agent shouldn't be able to do." You could have did this. Ain't nobody stop you. Like, it, he didn't. So you're mad because he got all of his players together that he represents and had like a like a, I guess like a like a top level meet and greet, yeah, like a, a nice meet and greet. You know what I'm saying? You got mad about that? But look at what they did. Look what they did to Rich Paul. They tried to make a whole rule to stop Rich Paul. They tried to say, oh, if you don't have a degree. The the thing is, there's when we're talking about a lot of the multimillionaires in this in this world. It's gatekeeping. You know what I'm saying? It's like y'all are doing, y'all, y'all have said, okay, we have to stop LeBron. Yep. That's the narrative right now. We have to stop LeBron. And let's be honest, nobody would care about that degree if Rich Paul wasn't. Right. Right. People always say to me, Jackie, why do you have if, to make if things Rich about Paul, if, if Rich Paul was Chad Winthrop, right. we would not be having this Billy conversation. Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> we would, he could be we would with not one be having tooth, this conversation. Right. He could be Billy with one tooth, never even graduated high school, and they'd be like, look at how he pulled himself up by his bootstraps and look at what he's doing. He, he's an American <laughs> story. <laughs> right. <laughs> So what that his wife's his sister? Look at how he pulled him up. So, like the narrative would be entirely it's different. True love. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh man. See, this is <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but LeBron. Uh so you you uh enjoy his play style. You I enjoy do. his on and off the court persona. I do. Um let me ask you this, because I, I have my own thoughts. Do you think LeBron gets another ring in LA? Yes, I do. This year, running it back. Boom. <laughs> I say this. Barring, and I've said this on another podcast too, barring any injuries of top le- of like starting players, two more rings. See, LeBron, and I said I, LeBron I said isn't two. LeBron ain't old. He's I mean, right. I know he's like sports old, but people have right. played, people have played longer than he than he's in the league right now. Tom Brady's 42. Thank you. Wait, or did so, he just turn 40? He old, though. <laughs> yeah, so in a in a sport where people run full blast into each other. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, I used to play defensive end. So I, mm. look, I, blindsiding a quarterback is awesome. It is. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't on front. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, I know better now. You know, I don't want my brain to be messed up. I know better. Right. But at the time, it was fun coming around that corner. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't even see me. <laughs> right, right. But, but anyway, <laughs> but I think he got two more. And so I, I think he's he gets, got two more too, but it's gonna be a struggle. Yeah, because sec- that 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 second one, I think he, I think we run it back this year yeah. for sure. Um, but then that next year, I think everything's just gonna be all off because you know we came back. This is the fastest in sports history. Anybody came back from a break. It's 72 games. You have to do a lot in a little in a little bit of time. I think it's just going to think about how good on. the uh, how good the Trailblazers were were all mm-hmm. there. You know, so if you get some some you know in that second run that that third mm-hmm. that third for the three peat, you get some young some young solid cats. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. I like the squad we got now, though. I, I like the squad true, we true got that. now. This is this is a dope squad. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. Kuz mad. is gonna. Kuz just resigned too. Kyle um, Kuz, no, I'm just playing. Every time I, I think of I, him, I think about uh, the skit on SNL. Right. <laughs> He's like Kyle Kuzma. I just, you know, Ooh. I thought he was always gonna be a, on the trading block, um, just because I think that he is the most valuable asset we would have to trade because people can see mm-hmm. Kyle shows shows moments of greatness. He shows these moments, but he just True. never carries them through long enough. So it's one of those things where I kind of wonder, same thing he's, I said about Lonzo that, Ball. He's got that Jeremy Lin 
status where it's like oh no 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 now now wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> he's not jeremy lynn now we're not gonna do that man. no oh man it's hilarious <laughs> i was waiting no. i was like i was like let me let me test the waters let me see if no take <laughs> don't do that don't do that like, jeremy, lynn, jeremy lynn let's be honest jeremy lynn had one good game one 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 <laughs> homie had one good game and people was acting like he was like People was treating him better than the folks treat LeBron. That's what I'm saying. It's like, and, and people still say, you remember that time? No, you don't even remember that time. <laughs> you, don't remember, you don't remember that. No. Mm -mm. Uh, so mm. anyway, my, my bad. <laughs> Continue. No, but but I think Kuz, you know, if he can develop. And the thing is, it's, is LeBron is definitely, I think we all saw the game the other night where he kind of started trying some new things. We've never seen LeBron do that. He knows that he's at this moment now where he doesn't have to always be the guy that carries a team. We've, yeah. He's got a full squad now, you know, and that's that this is his first time he's had moments, you know, as long as Kyrie wasn't in his feelings, you know, and Kevin Love was really good too, but, but this is his first Kevin time. Kevin Love a got full, hurt up a couple times though. But, you know, and Kevin Love got in his feelings, too, when, when they didn't have him on one picture. They had him on every other picture. They didn't have him on one picture, and he got in his feelings. He's had a, a lot of emotional people around him. Yeah. And I'm not saying that and the people no that he has. there's no jealousy anymore. Right, you know and saying? that's the thing. Mm. Like, he's, no. the way that they get down with each other and, and just have this love for each other that you can see from day one, that's that's how you cultivate a winning team. And I, yeah. I think he's just going to milk that and he's gonna make everyone around him better. And I yeah, think it's definitely. just dope to see to see this moment in time for him. But I, I'm going this one for sure. This next one, it's we just gonna have to see. We just gonna have to see. Because it's hard to get it's hard to get three in a row. It's hard. Yeah. It's very, very I'm, hard. I'm holding I'm holding out for that three. I think I now question. Say he gets mm -hmm. a three peat here in LA. Mm-hmm. Do you think the conversation is finally done? No. Do you think it's finally done? Do you think, do you think we, as LeBron sexuals, can finally say, it's, it's done, man. It's done. I mean, the conversation's been go. done for me. I let, let other people let do go. the talking. It's because it's over. When, when Jordan <laughs> fans come to me and they're like, oh, he, he, he won six, I'm like, okay, but can we admit that it's hard to get to the finals? How come Jordan didn't go to more finals? How come he hasn't been to as many finals as LeBron yeah, has? Yeah, because if know, you how... want to count how many finals he's been to, he's been to 10, right? LeBron's been to more. Yeah. He's been to more on, finals than and Jordan. And on worse teams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because yep. let's not front. I remember, uh, and I, I, after this, I'll leave LeBron alone because I know everybody that watches ain't, ain't in love with LeBron. But I remember when he first did the move to Miami. I was full for it. Jordan had something to say. Magic had something to say. And I'm like, hold up. These are two dudes that's like starting lineup are Hall of Famers. <laughs> Shut mm -hmm. up. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, 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 hold up, Magic. Who did you play with again? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, Magic, stop. Come. And Come here's on. the real thing, and this is why I tell people all the time, I don't care. People say, oh, well, Kobe stayed on the Lakers for the his First of all, Kobe requested a trade. Don't yeah, miss Kobe me with that. Kobe been. requested a Wasn't trade. Wasn't supposed to be a Hornet? Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, Ooh, don't miss different. me with that. Miss me with that. That would have been different. And, because here's the thing. I don't care if you I don't care if you win seven rings on seven different teams. That is hard. For, for you to go from yep. one squad to another and win a ring that yeah. first year, that is hard because chemistry takes time. So look, LeBron is the GOAT. I'm, I don't have nothing else to say about that. Yep. He the GOAT, especially me. on and off the court activity, what he's doing for the future of the game and what he's doing for the future of the youth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Wu-Tang is for the children, but LeBron is also for the children. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I love him. Man can do uh, no wrong by me. So um, when it comes to uh, your journey as writer, reporter, uh, you know, producer, um, what is, or maybe, maybe I'll ask this. Do you think about your legacy in this space um, mm. at all? And if so, what do you want that legacy to be? Um, that's a good question. I always think about legacies and, and I think that sometimes, cause for me, I don't have children and I don't know if I, I've always said since I was a little girl that I don't know if I want children um, because there's so many kids that 
are in the foster care system that I feel like, why should I bring another life into this world when I can save one that's already having issues? Um, and I think that when you have children, your, your legacy is easier to build because they can carry on your vision, your dream and things of that nature. So for okay. me, um, to, for me to know that I don't want to have children now, of course, if Mr. Wright come along, I, that might change. But right now, um, <laughs> I can say that I don't want to have children, but I still want to impact the lives of children, if that makes sense. I want yeah. to make sure that, um, because with the opposite reaction in Nightcast Media, which is what I have with, with Nick Hamilton, we have a young lady that, you know, she's younger and she's in the, you know, the inner city that people would think are, is, is less than. I don't think that people are less than. I think their circumstances are less than mine. And I think a lot yeah. of those circumstances are less than mine by design. So I don't, I don't True. address that situation as much as I address how that situation came to be. So we have a program that we're starting now where we're going to take on two, three kids every year and not only teach them what we do, but how to do it on their own. And then also help them build that up, get sponsors and things of that nature, and then also help push them out. Neither one of our platforms nice. are, are super, super big because Nick and I are both the same. We, we very much love the creative process. We very much love writing and the craft. It's the social media we could do without. But then at the same time, <laughs> you know, these are young people who are all about that social media. So it's very much a, um, it's a very good relationship because they love to do the social media and we love to teach them. So I very much think legacy needs to be, you know, what, how you leave your mark on young people. For me personally, as far as how I present, I think my favorite thing about myself is I love, I'll say what I need to say. And I'll try to sugarcoat it depending on the platform I'm on. That's why I created my own platform so I can say it the way I want to say it. But when it comes to black issues, especially being from Colorado, I was raised to kind of, you know, dip and dodge those, not really address those too uh, much because okay. it makes it makes the white people in the room who are giving you your check or financing your project, it makes your black issues make white people uncomfortable. So I've always mm -hmm. been kind of taught to, you know, steer clear of those. Those days are gone because when I speak, especially when I speak about black issues, I'm not talking to the masses. I don't believe that a country that's done what it's done to us is going to be the country that helps us get out of the mess they created for us. I have a saying, I think a lot of black people do, is like, we all we got, we all we need. So when I speak, I speak very directly to black people. Do I feel like I have all the answers? No, but I feel like if you hear me talk and you, you say, hey, I think you're wrong in this. And then we have a dialogue. That dialogue alone is going to lead to a next step. That next step might help other people. So right. as long as we can move forward and figure out ways to help our people, that especially young people, so that they don't have to every other week see a hashtag, you know, of some, yeah. uh, you know, this, that's, that's the legacy. It's been, it's been getting more and more frequent. Mm-hmm. Now, mm -hmm. some people have been saying it's covered more, regardless of whether it's covered more or not, it's, it's happening. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, we, you know, we But I said it was, I told everyone after that. we had these, these big marches in LA and these big marches nationwide, I'm like, okay, you do understand that nothing comes without sacrifice because now yep. they see us coming into our own. Now they see us pulling together. The best way to combat that is to increase the level of violence against this. Y'all y'all know this is coming, right? Yeah, and they were it's, like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not. And here we are. <laughs> yep. it's because the, essentially the, the fallback, and I, I'll say this because when it comes to, I'm never, I'm never going to, well, maybe not say never going to hold my tongue, but I'm always going to, I'm going to always be straight up and honest. I will be tactful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that don't use tact and I think they don't use it on purpose to be, intentionally mean and hide behind mm -hmm. this idea of I'm just keeping it real. Right. Um, but I will be tactful, but I do think that people didn't realize that this is a marathon because what's right. going to happen is people are going to get it up in arms and start to march and start to push back and start to vote and start to this and the third. Well, mm -hmm. the system isn't going to be like, all right, <laughs> right. you got me. <laughs> no, right. the system is going to say, well, what do we have? Oh, intimidation. Mm -hmm. We have a whole group set up for that. Right. They have the infrastructure. They got cars. Some yep. of them got tanks, you know, mm -hmm. guns, everything. We can, mm -hmm. do, we can have you scared in your own home. Mm 
Right. So that's, that's the next way. And that's, I think, what we're going to continue to experience. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this. Just because there seems to be a changing of the guard, don't get your hopes up. I'll say that. Look, no, I, we we still need to we still need to stay focused. And, look, that that man told us alert. point blank. <laughs> he told us he said, "If I win, we can have a conversation about what my plan is for Black America." He has still not had that conversation. So trust me when I tell you, it's half a dozen on one side, six on the yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Say, mm -hmm. we're talking about covert versus overt. Exactly. And, Ali, and we're Ali. comfortable. <laughs> yeah. As a people, we're comfortable with the covert. I prefer the overt. I, yeah, I prefer I, to see my enemy for what he is versus yeah, I wondering. I want it all gone. It is yeah. like, I, mm -hmm. I think, like you said, with that comfortability, it's like, mm -hmm. look, y'all can't, don't fall for this. Then, right. There was a whole bunch of people that was like, ah, oh, just, just do it. Just go ahead. It'll be all right. We'll figure it out on the other side. Nah, because like, now we're on the other side. Like you're right. And everybody's like, well, now that we're here, we'll just keep, we'll push it back four more years. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Mm -mm. Like, nah, look, we want change. You know exactly what we wanted. We said it all summer. This is what we mm -hmm. want. You mm -hmm. want to give it to us or not? Yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, we, we got to keep pushing for that. And that's one yep. thing that I really uh, respect about you. Um, really, really enjoyed hearing your perspective. I'm um, glad that I was able to get you on the show. Thank you yes. for even, thank you for even, you know what I'm saying, considering me being able to come on and all that stuff. Um, yes, now when it, I get that, if that NDA thing works out, you have to bring me back on so I can tell everybody about it. <laughs> yes, I, yo, I'm, I'm definitely down. I'm, I'm definitely down. You can come through anytime. And whenever, whenever I, you know, get some, I'm moving some things around because I do like to talk sports, but usually I'm talking it in the middle of like DC and Marvel and some Star right. Wars or something. So when I'm I'm moving things around, y'all, I'm trying. I know y'all. I know y'all be like, we want to do more stuff. I'm trying to do more stuff, but you got. I have to ask you, know, you a question. I'm on my Since own. You asked me. You've asked me all these questions. I'm gonna ask okay. you this question because I've been seeing all over Twitter and Instagram that the new Wonder Woman movie is trash. Is that or is that not true? Have you seen it? it I've seen it. We did a review on it yesterday. I don't think it's trash. There's okay. a lot of people that I believe are overly nitpicking this movie for the sake of doing it. I think the movie's solid. Is it mm. great? No. But I think we're also in a culture where nothing is able to be okay. Right. Oh, okay, that was good. That was cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? It either has to be the best thing that ever happened in your life right. or it's trash. Right. Um, out of 10, I ended up giving it 7.5. So I oh, enjoyed not... it. Um, yeah, okay. I watch it again. But everybody else, I think, was down at like six or like five point five or whatever. Yeah, five point so, five has been the norm. Yeah, it, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't. But digging the first it, but one I was see, so good, though. So how does it yeah. compare with the first one? Hmm. With the first, it's such a different movie because one mm. is set in World War One. One is, but they did change writers, and you can tell that. Mm. But I'd say the first one has more action. The second one deals with more of who Wonder Woman is um, okay. as a person, um, as far as her relationship with kind of like her own thoughts and feelings, I guess. Gotcha. That's, I'm trying to be as vague as possible. Yeah, without, yeah, no spoilers. Like, <laughs> without spoiling it. But uh, right, it really right, right. deals with who she is and what she, who she wants to be mm -hmm. um, and what she wants to stand for. And I think there's a lot of great lessons for all of the characters in the story that I really enjoyed. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to check it out today. So that, I yeah, had to know. You know I had to know. And you know what I'm saying? Holler at me, DM me, let me know. Be like, ah, I was I will. whack. Right. It was horrible. <laughs> or be like, ah, you know, you was hard. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check it out today. <laughs> so, guys, we have exercised the demons. Big shouts to the chat. Kid at Heart came through. Thomas D, Panda up early. Um, and, of course, Tyler Bennett saying I'm bringing them on the dope guest. I, Tyler, I, I, know, I know what you're talking about. I know you out there. I, I know. I know you out there. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying, look, I, I know, I know. That's I, hilarious. You was, in, you was in the show yesterday, and now you're in the show today. I know. I, look, <laughs> hey, it's not, look, but you keep it classy and respectful, so thank you, Tyler. <laughs> so with that said, um, tell the people where they can find you. Yes, I'm mostly on Instagram and Twitter at J Ray the Fanatic. Um, look up J Ray the Fanatic on YouTube. Subscribe so you can check out my new shows. 
And of course, on the fumble every weekday morning, starting the fifth. Is that the fifth? Is that the first Monday back? Whatever day. The first Monday the after the New Year. Fourth is the first day back, I think. Okay. Yeah. Whatever day that fourth is. Fourth is that Monday. Okay. I think. Yeah, because that's when I go back to yeah, the regular. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. To the yeah. regular <laughs> nine to five. Like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Then, gotta go back to the regular nine to five and then, you know, do yep. this on the side. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me and yes, definitely yes. have me again. Yeah, this is fun. Cool, cool. So guys, with that said, we're gonna leave y'all. With Architron, but of I, of course, I am Nerd Soul, N E R D S O U L. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. YouTube is the hub. Hit that thumbs up if you like what you see. Hit that thumbs down if you don't. But if you hit that thumbs down, ha ha. So LeBron James after you. All right. He's taller than you. He's stronger than you. Than He's you. faster than you. He's going to slam dunk you. All right. Mm-hmm. Then, with excellence. I, with, with excellence. Podcast <laughs> if you want to listen. And Spotify for that music. So do not sleep. We're going to leave y'all with Architron. Until next time, this is what I you saying. Not only is Wu-Tang for the children, but LeBron is for the children. And so is Jay Ray the fanatic. That's We're right. We're just saying, peace. Mm. Uh. We out, y'all. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah.